the integral of square root of 1 minus x squared with Dr. Payam. Hello, and this is especially for my calculus students right now because I covered you know, a, a trick substitution and this is a very tricky integral or should I say tricky integral you know, <laughs> because we're dealing with square root of 1 minus x squared but the amazing thing is that trigonometry will actually help us solve this integral which shows you that it's actually, we didn't waste your time teaching you trigonometry. It's actually pretty useful. So it does go in a couple of steps. So the first step is to use a trig substitution. And the question is, which one? Well, notice you have 1 minus something squared. And we want to simplify this. Well, the only choices we have is 1 minus sine squared or 1 minus cosine squared. But cosine squared would work, but sine is actually nicer. So that x equals to sine of theta. And I like to remind you, in case you don't know, so the only way this works is if sine is 1 to 1. And in this case, theta is actually in the interval minus pi over 2 pi over 2. And this is a little technicality that will become useful in a second. And then, well, the next step is calculate dx. That's cosine of theta d theta. Right? You differentiate sine to get cosine, and you add an extra theta. And then, square root of 1 minus x squared. Maybe let's do it directly. Then our integral, square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Well, becomes integral of square root of 1 minus sine squared of theta, and then dx, which becomes cosine of theta d theta. Again, here use x equals to sine of theta. And again, this is a shorthand for dx. Okay. But now notice the awesome thing, 1 minus sine squared becomes cosine squared. This is precisely where the trig comes in, cosine squared theta, cosine of theta d theta, and that becomes integral absolute value of cosine of theta, cosine of theta d theta. Man, if only we could get rid of this absolute value. But yes, we can, America. Okay, <laughs> I guess the world. Remember? Two minutes ago, I told you theta is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, which means we're really focusing on this wedge here, you know. Theta between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And notice that if theta is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, pi over 2, <laughs> cosine of theta is actually non-negative. So, because cosine of theta is, I guess, positive, Absolute value of cosine of theta equals to cosine of theta. So in fact, the very naughty mistake you thought you did isn't a mistake after all. So we get that this equals to integral of cosine squared theta d theta. OK, and now how in the world do we evaluate this? No problem. Let's do some more trick. Notice, it's hard to integrate cosine squared, but it's much, much easier to integrate cosine of 2, theta. But cosine of 2 theta, that's just cosine squared minus sine squared. Minus sine squared of theta. And that's good, because here we have cosine squared. Well, sine squared, eh, that's just 1 minus cosine squared cosine squared of theta minus 1 minus cosine squared of theta. And if you calculate that, you get 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1. And then, and remember this is cosine of 2 theta. So if you solve for cosine squared of theta, you get cosine squared of theta equals to uh, 1 half. Oh, I guess me um, here. One half times one plus cosine of two theta, and that's 
one half plus one half cosine of two theta. And question, what is easier to integrate, this junk or this junk? You know, it's like golden junk if you want, you know. <laughs> okay, so the point is, you know, our integral cosine squared of theta d theta becomes integral of one half plus one half cosine of two theta d theta and then you can integrate that so one half theta and then here if you want you can use a substitution u equals to two theta if you do that you in fact get one quarter uh, sine of two theta plus a constant and Okay, and now we want to simplify this, okay? So we do have a result, integral of cosine squared theta e theta equals this. But, um, sorry, I meant to say this. Square root of 1 minus x squared dx equals to this thing. But of course, the left-hand side depends on x. So ideally, we want to write the right-hand side also in terms of x. And for this, we just have to sort of work backwards using what's called the triangle method. That's On the one hand, I guess I erased that already, but x equals to sine of theta. Okay. And now, well, on the one hand, we have this theta over 2, but notice if x is sine of theta, theta is arc sine of x. And so, theta over 2 is 1 half arc sine of x. That's good. That takes care of the first half of the integral. On the other hand, we want the sine of 2 theta. Well, 2 theta well, is 2 sine of theta cosine of theta. Okay. And then, well, sine of theta, that's just x. So we have 2x cosine of theta. The question is, what is cosine of theta in terms of x? And for this, as I already pointed out, use the triangle method. method. Because what do we have? x equals to sine of theta. So again, it's kind of silly, but sine of theta equals to x, which is x over 1. But remember, abracadabra, sokatoa, sine of theta, that's really opposite over hypotenuse. And x over 1, that sounds like opposite over hypotenuse. So maybe it would be a good idea to draw a triangle, a right triangle, whose opposite side is x and hypotenuse 1. So maybe here we have the right triangle, uh, triangle. Here was the, we have the angle theta. Opposite is x, hypotenuse is 1. And the question is, what is cosine of theta in terms of our given info? Well, cosine of theta, that's really just adjacent over hypotenuse which is this question mark over 1. Adjacent over hypotenuse. But it turns out we can actually solve for question mark. So it's like, <laughs> I'm the Sherlock Holmes of math. I find the mystery, okay? Because using the Pythagorean theorem, we have that this equals to square root of 1 minus x squared. So cosine of theta, is square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, which is square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's good, because we can come back to here. Sine of 2 theta is 2x cosine of theta, which becomes 2x square root of 1 minus x squared. And then, all we need to do is to put all this stuff together. So, in the end, we have the following of square root of 1 minus x squared. Remember, oh, I erased it. So it's 1 half theta plus 
one quarter sine of two theta plus a constant, and that becomes one half arc sine of x plus one quarter two x square root of one minus x squared plus a constant, and that's one half arc sine of x plus one half x square root of one minus x squared plus a constant. Ta-da! And again, notice the amazing thing. Or rather, I did forget the dx, but notice the amazing thing. This does not seem to involve any trigonometry, but we use trigonometry to simplify this formula, and then we went back to the world of, you know, I guess non-trigonometry, except for this sucker here. All right, thank you so much for watching, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Yay!